Pursuant to Chapter 20 of the Acts of 2021, this meeting will be conducted by a remote means. Members of the public who wish to access the meeting may do so in the following manner by emailing Steve McCarthy at McCarthyS at AmherstMA.gov. That's M-C-C-A-R-T-H-Y-S at AmherstMA.gov. No in-person attendance of members of the public will be permitted, but every effort will be made to ensure that the public can adequately access the proceedings in real time via technological means. In the event that we are unable to do so for reasons of economic hardship and despite best efforts, we will post on the town website an audio or video recording transcript or other comprehensive record of proceedings as soon as possible after the meeting. All right, so let's take a roll call of attendance. Allie. Here. Doug. Here. Gaston. Is he here? Gaston? Indeed, is he Gaston, if you're trying to talk? Is he phoning um, in or? Just... He is phoning in, yeah, I believe. Okay. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm late. Oh, that's go. all right. Don't worry about it. So I just was calling attendance and calling your name, Gaston. Okay. Okay. Here? here I am. Here? here. All right. Great. Super. Yes. And I am here. So uh, that is four present with one absent. Um, and next we go on to public comment. Is there anyone here for public, general public comment? Not unrelated to anything on the agenda. If you have general public comment, press the hand button on your screen and Steve will let you comment. Nope, no public comment. Okay. Um, all right, so we next we have licenses item three. Oh, I think someone actually yes. is raising their oh, hand. Oh, someone is writing, raising their hand. Oh yeah, okay, sorry. Um, who's commenting publicly? Mr. Perez. Mr. Perez, you can speak. Hi, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Welcome. Okay, good. You can hear me and you can see me or you can only hear me? I can only hear you, but I, I don't need to see you if you don't want it. Okay, it's fine. I just don't know why. Um, I don't know why I'm not connecting with the camera. I'm not sure, but I, but I can hear you. That's okay. That's good. So you have general public comment? Yeah, well, you know, I'm, you know, I'm Francisco. I'm just the one trying to get the Cisco's Cafe in Amherst. Oh, right. So we're going to come to you. Um, actually, we can just move on. So uh, it's a good thing you're up here. So under licenses, new liquor license application. So Treehouse, Charcuterie, Steve, that one um, has to be rescheduled till next time um, because they didn't get the abutters notices weren't Okay, out. so so yeah. so I don't I don't necessarily need to be in this meeting. Uh, no, we're going to move on to you next. Is that right, Steve? Are we in the right path? Is that enough to, to move on to, to? Okay, so you have the Common Victors license for yeah. Cisco's Cafe at uh, 68 Coles Road. Is that correct? It's correct, yeah. Great. All right, you're up. So um, so did everybody get, uh, do you want to introduce your business and tell us something about it? And then I'll see if anyone has any questions or comments. Okay, yeah. So my name is Francisco. I'm um, the owner of Pizza House of Amherst, and now I'm about to get Cisco's Cafe opened up in North Amherst, which is going to be breakfast and lunch, uh, you know, combination of uh, some Spanish and typical American cuisine. So that's my plan. That sounds great. Um, did everybody get a chance to look over the paperwork for the Common Vic? Doesn't even have any questions for Mr. Perez. Nope. Yes, Doug. I just have a nope. question. It's actually more for Steve. Um, I was noticing that I believe he, he was going to do the the BYOB uh, sort of addendum to us, Common Vic. That's correct. And yes, that is correct. Okay, so I saw the management plan, and, and that looked good. I think there's a uh, you know a, a pretty good approach to how uh, you'll you'll manage that. Um, can you tell us a little bit about uh, how much of that you think you'll experience? I mean, you just want to have it available, so if if people want to bring in a uh, a beer to have with their lunch or whatever, that's fine. Is that the idea? Yeah, uh, I wasn't sure. Is Arthur connected with us? I'm just not sure. I'm uh, here he, if you can hear me. Oh, yeah. I can hear you. Yes, we can hear you. Welcome, Mr. Haskins. Uh, why don't I let you speak and uh, I'll just be here. Okay. 
I think <laughs> Francisco wanted to achieve the ability to have the BYOB. We have a very complementary business across the way um, that may be a good source of potential um, folks to tie the two together in the mill district. But um, I represent the landlord. Um, I, I'm the real estate and community development director for WD Coles. And I'm also a personal friend of Francisco and here to support in any way. Um, but just wanted to say that uh, you know, we, we support him and we anticipate that this will be a very conducive way to get our community in North Amherst in District 1 to be able to have an open restaurant again very soon and have some amenities that tie it into the other businesses right there in the Mill District neighborhood. Okay, super, thank you. Um, any other questions or comments about this application from anyone? Helly, go ahead. If things go according to plan, would you extend to dinner hours or are you thinking that this is just, a, not just, but a, primarily a breakfast and lunch operation? Uh, so as at the beginning to start, I'm only focusing on breakfast and lunch, but I think maybe later in the future, I might be willing to do something like five to 10, call it that way. And then I have not decided exactly what can that be yet, but there is a possibility. I think I, I mean, quickly thinking, I think I would love to do something like um like some sort of like a tapas bar you know which i know it will require a different license but i think that's something that i will like to do in the future so open that up just like a, a totally different thing again i know again i have to apply for a different type of license but i think that north amherst uh, i think it needs something like that it'll be nice like a uh you know just beer and wine and a good uh you know, just a little small dishes, tapas, you know. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's the idea that I have at the moment. But uh, again, I'm not taking it serious yet. I will just want to take off and then see what happens. Great. Okay, good. Thanks, Helly. Um, and Mr. Perez, um, any other questions or comments about this? If there are no more, nothing, no concerns or anything, is there a motion to approve uh, the Common Pictures license for Cisco's Cafe LLC at 68 Coles Road? So moved. Thank you, Doug. Is there a second? I'll second. Thank you, Hallie. Is there any further discussion? If not, then we'll take a vote. Hallie. Aye. Doug. Aye. Gaston. Aye. And I vote aye. That is four to zero with one absent. Uh, the license is approved. Thank Great. you so much for coming in, Mr. President, Mr. Haskins, and best of luck with everything. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks so much. Okay, great. So, so just to reiterate the Treehouse Charcuterie doing business as Gray's Craze at 83 Coles Road is, will, uh, that'll be rescheduled for next time. So we don't need to vote on anything, correct, Steve? No, a or... public hearing couldn't even be opened. No. Okay, so we can't open anything. So we're just gonna skip that. And that takes us to our discussion items. The first of which is rental registration. So everybody, Steve sent around copies of stuff from that the CRC has been working on. And then there was an article from the Gazette. I didn't make that community session. Um, so I just had Steve send it around in case anyone wanted to know what went on and didn't make it themselves. So I don't know where, who is, I don't know where we are with this, but um, it looks like I kind of went through, I didn't have a chance to read all of the draft, but I did go through the summary and it looks like we're plugged in as the Board of Lessons Commissioners, as the, um, the people who do the, the appeals. So I don't know um, if we want to have any input on the the re re regulations in the beginning, Gaston, I think you were working on this, is that correct? Or if we just wanted to think about doing something for an appeals, like an appeals process, I wanna think about that. Yes, I mean, I, I, I would like to think about it carefully and I'm, unfortunately I, I did not have the, the chance to develop uh, feedback. Um, okay. I, I think that when we talked about it last, the idea of appeals seemed like it could be a, a, a function that would fit, but I, I'm not really prepared to say more. Okay. Okay, that's fine. 
Um, does anyone want to say anything about this, or should we get yeah, Doug? I just uh, the question I have is is because um, I haven't been tracking it very closely, and I, I you know I don't have a subscription to the online gazette, and I've already used my five articles, so I could read the other one. Oh, um, okay, but that's fine. Uh, but I, I'm just curious: does uh, does anyone have a sense of the time horizon under which the council's working to move this from the CRC to the council and vote? So I'm just thinking about you know sort of our work plan and and you know, A, how right. much can impact their, their choices, but also sort of what is our right. work like, look like? From CRC to town council. I don't know that, I don't know. I don't know, let me, let me, I will do that. Let me email Mandy, email Mandy, Mandy Johan. Yeah, and just, I mean, it may, I mean, it may play out over a longer time frame, but if she's got a sense of what kind of targets they're thinking of. Okay. That would All be right. helpful. It, maybe they're looking for a, a full implementation for next July. Okay. I don't know. Was I believe they are. I think the initial plan was to try to have it ready for adoption by the end of the year. And I don't know if it's looking like it will be quite there, but I do think this is a major priority for them. Right. Okay. And, All right. And those would cycle on July 1. If, is that right, Steve? Yes. Okay. All right. So let me email her, Amanda Johanneke, and find out what that time frame is. And then um, guess on that will give you some time to to work, do some something on that. Yes. And then, um, do you want me to put it on the, oh, sorry, go ahead. Oh, I was just gonna suggest that if um, you could have Steve circulate her response when you get it to, okay. to kind of remind us all, that would be great. Okay, circulate response, all right. Yeah, I my understanding that. of what uh, a role that's being considered for the license commission at this point, I don't know if they've really anything settled on anything, but a role is being considered is um, to draft, excuse me, regulations, um, be the rental appeals board, which would be the an appeals um, right. appeals board for any appeals to rental reg and right. uh, to set fees. Rental appeals, okay. And, and set the, rental, fees. the existing rental appeals board has met zero times in, in 10 years, but. So do you mean, do you mean fees for, because they had some fees on the draft. Do you mean fees for like penalties or fees for licenses probably any and above i can imagine there will be a um a suggestion passed along okay because uh, they did just raise the fees themselves but okay. um, i think that 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 power would they're envisioning that that power may lie with the license commission okay all right great watch so. out <laughs> all right so i will do that so gaston do you want uh do you want us to put this on the agenda for next meeting on the 17th or do you want to wait till the early december um, I, I am open, um, uh, to what others think. What do you think? Do we go over it next time or do we want to, or, you know, actually let me email Mandy Jo Hendeke and then see what her time frame is. And then we can plan from there. I can talk to Steve yeah. about it. And he I can do email. think it'll be a busy meeting next time. Yeah. Oh, right. Cause you've got other okay. stuff. Yeah. All the, okay. We're, we're getting into renewal season. Renewals. Here, so. Okay. All right, so I will I do that. I haven't talked about renewals yet, but yes, that too. <laughs> okay. Oh, uh, okay. Oh. You want, you'll give okay. us a preview then. Right. Um, so we'll have this uh, liquor license application. Um, the cousins uh, should be ready again. And then also a first for the license commission and possibly a first in the last 20 to 50 years of the town. Um, there is a uh, land license for the storage of explosives and inflammable materials. Oh, is, wow. uh, issued by the um, local licensing authority, um, but then not renewed, but then renewed by the town clerk. It's we. I spent a lot of time with the fire department in the last couple of weeks figuring this out, but um, it tri it triggers um, when you have over a certain amount of any flammable materials, anything from um, you know propane gas to gasoline to oil to explosives to small arms ammunition. But there's a threshold for all these different things, and when you go above that, you need to get a license. And uh, in this case. Um, the new building at UMass going in where Lincoln Apartments used to be, the intersection mm -hmm. of Mass Ave and Lincoln Ave. Um, they will uh, eventually be heating the building with heat pumps, but um, for temporary heating this winter so they can install a sprinkler system and um, do certain construction work that needs a certain temperature. Um, they need to install uh, 8,000 gallons of liquid propane um, <laughs> to heat it over the winter, which I hear will have daily refills. But. Wow, that's a lot. Okay, that's exciting. Um, 
it's also going to be expensive given the price of those things right now. But yeah, if if the daily refills um, is accurate, then somebody else we I calculate with a coworker at thirty six million for the winter. But maybe I heard that wrong. Wow, wow, that's a lot. crazy. Yeah. Uh, if I may ask a quick follow up. Yes. Um, so there there are other storage tanks. The one I can think of right now is is um, on. Uh, Dickinson Street next to, it's now an Amherst College property, but it was the former classic Chevrolet. There's a storage tank there, a fuel storage tank there. Do fuel storage tanks like that fall under this license? Yes, they do. So the interesting thing about this license is it needs to be issued by the license commission, but when it's renewed, it just goes to the town clerk. Hmm. Um, okay. So we have a number of these licenses, some as old as like 1912 yeah. when they were ah. issued. Um, in fact, most of them are from pre World War II, actually, and um, and uh, but yeah, it's only new applications that would come yeah. to the license commission. Because that tank that sits on this little wedge of property, that's yeah, I know exactly the one you're thinking of. It, yeah, is, you know, you drive by most of the time, you don't realize there's a storage tank there, but it's also you think it's part of like what was an auto dealership or the or the Amherst College property. Now, it's not; it's independently owned, um, I believe, and so it's, it may be owned by Amherst College now, but it was an independent piece of property and. So it's just a curious thing. It's all. Yeah, that one has an interesting history. I mean, that, that it kind of needs to come down. That's been abandoned for years. But um, I, my understanding is that it's owned by Schirner Oil now, and that it was originally for refueling trains. Right. Hmm. Yeah. Given its location, that makes sense. I always thought it was for the dealership too, but I guess not. Yeah. They didn't use that much gas. Okay, so um, okay, is there anything we need to prepare for that license hearing? I will definitely be sending along some materials. Okay. And uh, not not uh, the day before, but um, okay, yeah, great. We've got um, it may not be on for the seventeenth because they've got a. It's going to be a hundreds and hundreds of abutters notices, including in Hadley too, because that parcel touches. It goes all the way down to like rafters. It's oh right. You mass from the Hadley line to. Um, the First Baptist Church, and it goes down all the way down to rafters. So, um, yeah, and, and they have to notify others in Hadley too. So it it may not come together for this come that's together all, for the seventeenth. But that that's because it, the piece of property itself is considered all one continuous single piece. It is one parcel. Yeah. Wow. Okay. UMass's parcels are weird. Yeah, and it issues to the land, not to the building or the the applicant. It actually right. is attached to the land. So. Um, it's a, it's a curious one. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's something to look forward to. Yeah, learning new so, stuff all the time. Yeah. Um, all right, so we're gonna reschedule rental registration discussion after we hear back from Manny Johanneke. Um, next one is coin operated amusement devices license. And Steve, you talked to some people. Yes, so I spoke and, to the, yeah. um, the building commissioner, the uh, town manager, um, and uh, the police chief, and of course, we had um, uh, looked, talked to the finance director last time, and um, police chief was surprised to hear it even exists. Nobody okay. else could think of any reason for it to exist. Okay. Um, it was unanimous uh, approval of eliminating it if the board so chose. Okay, so we can eliminate that, and we have scheduled a public hearing um, after, yes, Doug. I was just going to say we can eliminate the fee, but we can't eliminate the license, correct? Oh, is that right, Steve? I believe I believe we can. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I don't. If we can eliminate the 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 uh, the license as well, mm -hmm. um, yeah, I think that's. I think. Well, anyway, we can discuss it in our public hearing, but okay. that would be simpler even because then you don't even have the paperwork that people have to file. So that's. Now I have to file too. So yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So anything else? Any other questions about Steve's research into the coin operated amusement devices license stuff? Or should we just wait for the public hearing in two minutes? Yeah. Okay. All right. So the next discussion item, live entertainment license. And Steve and I were talking about this a little bit and thought. Um, we'd probably like to get moving on it. And I think we, we touched on this briefly at our last meeting and we'd like to um, put together a working group and maybe have a little more structured process for this so that we know who is doing, who's doing what and um, 
So I know um, I was going to like, where do we start? Do we do a comparison with other towns? Do we look into the, I don't know. There's no one, I was gonna work on the group, but uh, yeah, Doug, sorry, go ahead. Uh, just if I can offer a couple suggestions. And yep. I think the, the name doesn't necessarily imply all that it covers. Cause I think um, we've traditionally, even if you were playing recorded music because mm -hmm. it was being played or the music or, or was, or the entertainment was, um, you know, live for viewing and enjoying mm -hmm. that it was considered part of that. So I think that's, there's some definitional stuff around just, you know, the, the different kinds of entertainment. Mm -hmm. uh, I think it's going to be a critical question. And I think that, um, uh, and I think this is really one where like short term versus longer term is a very critical right. distinction. Mm -hmm. um, and so that could be like one group could work on the short term, which is about, you know, temporary events or things on, you know, maybe things on the common. Mm -hmm. um, you know, when I went to town a bazillion years ago on Wednesday nights in the summer, they showed a movie. I think they've done that maybe a few times since. I mean, in recent years, they've even tried to do that when COVID hit. Um, that would technically qualify as something that needs a license, although it's a if it's a town, you know, like LSSC did it, you know, mm -hmm. Shrek, you know, we charge ourselves a license. But that, those all things, you know, but if some other organization wanted to do a movie, you know, if somebody uh, as part of the Merry Maple, if, you know, the Rotary Club wanted to show It's a Wonderful Life on the common, would they need a live entertainment license? I would suggest technically, yes. That's a short-term license. Mm -hmm. It's different than like the Drake. Right. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Also, the other question I, I want to just pose for people to start thinking about as far as how to segment this is, you know, um, this also begs a question about UMass. Um, you know, we make them get liquor licenses, but do we make them, and do we have purview over getting live entertainment? Because there's, you know, multiple Bauer Auditorium, Fine Arts Center, et cetera, that all have live entertainment. You know, it may not be jurisdictionally appropriate, but, and I don't want to necessarily gouge the university, you know, to sort of come up with these things or whatever. I mean, mm -hmm. the permanent structures that are used for those kinds of events all the time, but um, anyway. Um, and, I, and I guess the other question is, you know, defining entertainment too, because you could have, you know, we, we tend to think of like music, um, but it could be theater, it could be just spoken word, it could be just amplified voice, you know, so like if you had poetry read. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I think we want to act this quite a bit, a little bit. I don't want to get overly crazy about it, but just to, you know, encompass those cases and, and think about, well, what is it that we care about and what do we want to give the public an opportunity to weigh in on it okay. if something comes up. Okay. All right. So I, I, I'd just I, like to point out that um, there's something really uh, problematic about putting those two words together uh, that uh, you need to get a license for entertainment is really disturbing. Uh, it sounds like footloose, like dancing is banned in this town or something. Mm -hmm. I, I think we really need to identify what is our uh, the legitimate scope of regulation here. I, I can't think of anything besides crowds and noise, uh, but I'm, ha you know, I'm happy to, to hear what you all think. I just, the idea that we license entertainment is um, uh, really sounds bad. Yeah, I Kelly. was also going to say when Doug said amplified spoken word, I mean, I would hate to then have to look at like free speech and when you have rallies on the common, right. I don't think that would, I would, as a resident, I would hope we wouldn't have to apply for a license for that. So I'm not sure. It'll be interesting to come up with what works for this license and what we don't. Right. The, the other thing I will add just to, you know, cause that gets into questions of first amendment. I fully agree. That's the, that's the part of why I said what I said, because that gets to be a weird sort of definitional thing is very important because we don't want to wade into things that we don't or shouldn't regulate um, and are not really legally allowed or obligated to. I think the other thing around entertainment is, you know, we don't have any in Amherst, but there are gentlemen's clubs for lack of a, term that mm -hmm. have, you know, could come up, uh, you know, we haven't had anything like that in Amherst, but, you know, 
it could be something that, that arises that that would be live, not necessarily music related, but you know, the question of noise, but also other factors, right? So uh, again, I think it, it's all about sort of how we frame it and, and, and you know, what we, you know, uh, we have appropriate, you know, jurisdiction over and we want to have, and we want to exert that jurisdiction, right? I'm not saying I have any opinion about any of this at this moment. I'm just <laughs> brainstorming some thoughts. Okay, so um, does anyone have any idea, like Steve or Doug, about the history of this light license, like off the top of your head? Was it in existence when you came on the board? I can tell you my experience with it on select board. It came up very, very rarely. It was generally people did it. Um, they were going to have, you know, the cases I can recall were, you know, a yoga studio was having an open house. They wanted to invite people and in. they want to have some music playing mm -hmm. or, you know, uh, or, or probably technically renewed licenses for places that uh, played ambient music, music during their, uh, during their operating hours, like, you know, bar or something, but we may not, we may not, it, it wasn't a license that anyone really sought to enforce or that we right. sought, you know, really to press people for it and be, because it's been five dollars forever i think the idea was oh if you're going to have you know a wedding reception and have a band in the backyard you should let the neighbors know and you should get a license for that i, I think it's, it's been a very passively thought of type of license probably mm -hmm. generally ignored i think there's some circumstances uh, my, my opinion is that there are some circumstances where it makes some sense to have something but again i think all these questions we've raised about you know, what do we mean by this? And what is the sort of piece that we want to care about, like crowds and noise kind of thing, um, you know, and where our comfort or discomfort level, are. those are the critical questions. I think there's there's some places where it makes sense to have something, mm -hmm. whether it needs to be anything like it was. I don't know. I don't know that it necessarily does, but I think okay. it's. Um, so Doug, does the Drake have one? The Drake has, right, they have a live entertainment yeah. license or no? Yeah. yeah? So because we don't have, there seems to be some kind of divide, like we don't, UMass doesn't have one for any of their venues, but they're not a nightclub in the same way that like the Drake and- Right, and I think Lagoon the thing is, is the, that, you know, it's, it's interesting. Well, I, we, the, the university gets liquor licenses from us because it's very clear in the law that we have right. jurisdiction over that. Right. Even though it's on state land, but it's state land within the town of Amherst. The way the law for liquor licenses is written is that we have uh, control over okay. that. Okay. Um, I mean, there are other areas that are funky. So, like, if you think about that kind of thing, I think we have to do fire inspection on the university, but like electrical inspection, we don't. But plumbing, we do. It's like there's a weird okay. you know, mishmash of things relative to our regulatory control on the okay. university because it's state land. Okay. My guess is this is likely not you know, uh, not something we could probably enforce. So the university is probably off limits in a lot of ways. I think the only time it really bothers is if, they, you know, they have some venue that's literally adjacent to a neighborhood. So if suddenly they started having things at North Village that they just rebuilt, which is now University Village, I think, or something like that, where it could impose upon the, you know, the neighbors nearby, that would be a concern to us, but we may not have any way to regulate that. So I think it's just an open question about is is it one of those things we have purview or not? Okay, all right, thanks. Yeah, that's uh, accurate, Doug. About some things being split up, and um, I, I I I think it's probably worth checking with our legal counsel. But the way most of the chapter one forty is written, it pretty much just says in the town. So I don't really see any reason why UMass wouldn't have to get Common Vicks and um, Live Entertainment and all those things. Um, yeah, which is yeah. fine, okay. but. Um, so that's but, a yeah. question. And I think our first step would probably be um, there's several different um, sections in chapter 140 that cover what you might colloquially call live entertainment. Mm -hmm. And um, it's kind of always difficult to determine what was ever adopted by the town because a bylaw doesn't need to be passed. It just has to be voted on at some point that, you know, the town adopts. A lot of these are, a lot of these are uh, sections are, you know, if the town so adopts this section, you know, you can license whatever, you know, pinball machines or whatever it may be and mm -hmm. um and so the question would be kind of to maybe identify those sections in chapter 140 that we would be interested in and then kind of ask the um the uh, town clerk to see you know was this ever adopted by town meeting in you know 1977 or something um and i do believe there must have been some section 
Um, I think, you know, what, what I've been trying to determine as I've been in this role is, you know, there was one section that was named specifically in the license template that we inherited, um, but that only really covers um, things within a, a an establishment. It wouldn't cover, you know, as far as, unless we have a different section of the law that we adopted that we don't really know about, which is very possible, you could presumably have, uh, you know, Woodstock on the town common. It wouldn't require a live entertainment license. Mm -hmm. So okay. uh, that's probably the first step, I think. Other, I was just going to say the other antecedent of this license may have to do with, um, you know, music or bands at like house parties. You know, so mm -hmm. if you think about the, um, what's it used to, the Hobart Hoedown or whatever the heck it was called, you know, mm -hmm. it's, let's put a band, you know, it may have been a way to provide the police with some uh, leverage. But I don't know that, you know. Okay. So, uh, so for next time, we want to go over chapter 140, as, as Steve suggested. Is that right, Steve? And yeah, I mean, I think it might well. be worth just taking a, a browse. I think it's like around section 177 ish, maybe. 177. But there's, a, there's a lot of, it's such a, it gets weird towards the end there. Um, it's 140 so expansive, like all the firearms legislation is in 140 right. earlier. And then there's just a lot of, I mean, it goes down to, I think there's like, you know, maybe not quite the the guy, you know, cranking the accordion with the monkey dancing him around him, but there's all kinds of different weird little specific things that, um, you know, if, uh, okay. allowing, allowing, you know, under 18 to be in a, a, a house of entertainment after 6 p.m. on a Sunday. There's all kinds of weird things and that, but some of them are kind of useful. Um, and so it would probably be, you know, trying to identify, I mean, maybe any section is relevant and any, any section that covers this kind of licensing and asking the town clerk if it's ever been adopted by the town. But um, that's probably would be the first step is kind of taking a browse through there. And, okay. Um, All right. To that. And um, I'm certainly happy to, uh, to help with that myself. I mean, um, I probably will be busy for, with renewal and um, some rental reg things and, to, for, and all these licenses for through the end of the year. But if we do want to um, begin with this more in earnest in January, I'll have more time to, um, to kind of look through that and, and, and uh, converse with the town clerk. Okay, so that sounds good. Should we, since you've got a lot going on, is there anyone else I was going to work on this uh, guest on? Did you want to help out too, or anybody else? Um, and maybe we can just go uh, yes, through. Yes, I'm, I'm, I'm more than happy to, uh, okay. to, you know, read some of this history. Um, certainly, if, uh, 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 Steve, if you, if you could send an email just to get the ball rolling that, and, and so I have a reminder, I would, that would be terrific. Yeah, absolutely. And then maybe we can schedule a more serious yeah. discussion and maybe everyone can look through 177 for the new year. We can really start going. I, I would like to suggest, however, that I, I would like to suggest that we center our deliberations on what we think is important here. Um, and because I, I suspect that if you go back to uh, historically w where these entertainment licenses came from and were used, a lot of it is trying to prevent the riffraff and things that are, mm -hmm. you know, jazz when in the, it's in the wrong time period. Just stuff that we probably don't want to, it's not relevant except to make sure we don't do it. Right, yeah, I, yeah, I completely agree. I think we're, there are different concerns that we have and- um, Those coin operated machines yeah. and live music are bad. I know, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I think, yeah, I think like kind of really nailing down what we, you know, what is really relevant to us and just regardless of what the history is, what, you know, what some of the concerns might be for live entertainment in Amherst would be, is really Excellent. important. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Okay, great. So we will look forward to that too in January. Um, anything else on live entertainment licenses? Nope. Okay. So public hearing A, elimination of requirement and associated fees for coin operated amusement devices license. This is a hearing, shall we? You need a motion yes. to uh, open the hearing? Yes, let's do that. So moved. Thank you, Doug. Is there a second? Second. Thank you, Hallie. Uh, we'll take a vote. Hallie. Aye. Doug. Aye. Gaston. Aye. And I vote aye, four to zero with one absent. And the public hearing 
for the coin-operated amusement devices license requirement and associated fees, potential elimination is open. So do we want to just do away with the whole thing? And does anyone have any arguments against or strongly in favor or? I would like to say that the, the argument in favor mm -hmm. is that if we ever discover any problem, we can act very quickly. That's true. If there's a problem with the coin offer, does anyone? Yeah, in, I mean, in favor of, of repealing the. Of the repealing it. Oh, repealing there is it. A problem. Yeah, in, in argument, yeah, in favor of repealing is that if there's a, some kind of issue in the future, we can always address it then. That's right. We can always we can always bring it back, right? Yes, Doug? Right. I was just, yeah, to just to kind of confirm that it's, or, or, or add to that a little bit, it's just that it's, it's not that we can't enact a license, but we don't have to. I mean, I think that the only delay we'd have, like, so if something arise, some circumstance arises more like, oh, this would be a perfect example of a, of a, a coin operated amusement license that requires us to weigh in, you know, we have to notice a public hearing, reenact the license and a fee, and then, you know, which is, I can't imagine that the, that we need to act any faster than what we could do through that hearing process. So I okay. think that's on there. We're probably in fine shape. And and I think the I, the other thing I would just say is as we discussed previously that the the rationale behind this is is a hundred years old and not something that's germane to the current circumstances that we deal with. So I don't think it's something we need. Okay. Great. I, I agree. And if it's something we feel like we need to act rapidly on, chances are it's also illegal and the police will be involved. Okay, that's right. true. <laughs> right, so. Okay, great. So if there's nothing else to discuss during the public hearing, we don't have anybody who's come to the public hearing, do we? Steve, is there anyone here? I don't think so. Doesn't look like it. Okay, great. Um, so, I'm gonna close it. Okay, unless, let's Unless Hallie's daughter is off camera. <laughs> <laughs> so there's a motion to close the hearing. Is there a second to close the hearing? Second. Thank you, Hallie. Um, let's take a vote. Hallie. Aye. Doug. Aye. Gaston. Aye. And I vote aye four to zero with one absent. The hearing is closed. Um, is there a motion to eliminate the requirement and associated fees for the coin operated amusement devices license? So moved. Thank you, Doug. Is there a second? Second. Thank you, Hallie. Is there any further discussion? Hearing none, we'll take a vote. Hallie. Aye. Doug. Aye. Gaston. Aye. And I vote aye. That is four to zero with one absent. We have eliminated the requirement and associated fees for the coin operated amusement devices license. That's done. Well, we're going to start calling us libertarians. I know, right? <laughs> let's, let's hear it for small government. <laughs> don't, don't tread on my pinball table. <laughs> That's right. OK. Topics not reasonably anticipated 48 hours prior to the meeting. Are there any topics that we haven't discussed um, yet? So Steve gave us kind of an overview of what we can expect over the next two meetings. Um, we have the 17th as our next meeting at five o'clock. Hallie won't be able to join us, but we might be able to look forward to flammable materials. If not then, then the next one. So yeah. Okay. And so, explosives, not in this application, but in oh, the license. Yeah. <laughs> explosives. Um, okay, great. So if there's nothing else, is there a motion to adjourn? So move. Thank you, Doug. Is there a second? Second. Thank you, Hallie. I'll take a vote. Hallie. Aye. Doug. Aye. Gaston. Aye. And I vote aye. Four to zero with one absent. We're adjourned at 5.43 p.m. Thanks, everybody. And see you on the 17th. And Wait. happy birthday to Greta. Bye. Thank you. We'll see you guys in December. Thank you. Bye, Gaston. Bye, Steve. Thank you. Bye. Bye.